Hello YouTubers, this is a new session where I get to introduce you to an idea, a concept uh, where we can leverage uh, OpenAI or AI in general to simplify the experience in terms of querying data, you know, reaching out to certain pieces of data and be able to kind of retrieve these pieces and be able to process them. Even if you don't know anything about, you know, SQL or the entity framework or anything like that, simply by just using a natural language. So just to give you kind of a high level, what we are trying to accomplish here, and I'm going to show you a nice kind of demonstration of, of the pieces here. Um, what we're really trying to do here is to basically uh, leverage AI in a useful way that would allow people to kind of be able to leverage it. So imagine that if you have a prompt in here, so let's just let's say it's a command line or whatever the case may be, and we need to create a component that sits right here, right? So this is, you know, um, let's call it entity intelligence, right? So it's something that understands entity, understands data, but it also has the intelligence, right? And what this entity intelligence does is that it takes a normal prompt and queries an existing SQL database, right? Uh, the the goal here is to not complicate things to make it simple. I want everybody in the world to be able to leverage AI to be able to kind of uh, query data and retrieve data and build reports and do whatever they want without having to know anything about that system. That's really what the system is. Very pure and, uh, and simple. It's nice because it falls within, you know, the ideal try nature of things. You know, you have an exposure layer and an intelligence layer, really an intelligence layer and a database. Okay, how are we going to accomplish something like this? Well, you know, I, playing around with things, and we're going to build this, you know, uh, at least bits and pieces of it together, and I'm going to share the code with you. Uh, what we really want to do is that we want to be able to go and talk to OpenAI. So we know that OpenAI is one piece in this equation. So that's OpenAI. And OpenAI will allow us to take a prompt and then convert that prompt into a SQL query, right? But it's not that simple because you still need a something like Dapper, right, to basically be able to take a, a, a query and hit a database and retrieve, you know, a, a dynamic list, right? Something that I couldn't find. I would rather use the Entity Framework, but it, it, it doesn't really offer you this capability. So here we are. And then on top of Dapper, you know, Dapper will basically help us kind of hit the database. So the database sits right behind Dapper in here. And basically Dapper will allow us to kind of communicate with this external kind of entity. So here's the database. Okay. And then in here, here's our prompt. So our prompt is sitting right here. Here's our prompt. And our prompt will basically, we will take that query you know, from the prompt and then go and take that query, convert that query back into a SQL query, right? And have the SQL query basically, you know, execute on the database, right? Very sweet and simple, very straightforward, no problem there, right? There's a couple of issues with this approach, right? Uh, AI has to know about your data sets, right? It doesn't really understand you know what your structure is in order for you to give you a proper query you need to teach it and educate it about all the different you know tables that you have so for instance if you have a student's table and if you have a a, a, a assignments table and if you have teachers table you need to teach it these things in order for it to be able to learn about your data structure and be able to kind of give you the information you need we're going to do all that stuff together and I'm going to show you how that actually gets executed. Let's, you know, let's go into our uh, database. Here. I'm going to uh, increase the resolution here for people that are watching on their phones. I think 200% should be OK. OK, 200%. And then I'm going to go and open up uh, Microsoft um, uh, Studio Solution. This is the server uh, studio management system that basically allows you to kind of navigate data and play with data and whatnot. I'm going to create a new database here, a new database from scratch, right? And let's let's call that data um, uh, demo AI DB. OK, demo AI DB. I'm going to refresh the here we are. And then I want to create a bunch of tables, right? I'm not going to create the tables in the entity framework way, the, the usual way, because it's it's outside of the scope of what I'm trying to accomplish here. Uh, I'm trying I'm going to do it in a, in a little bit of a different way. I think here it's not very happy about the resolution. So I need to 
Maybe I need to minimize my resolution a little bit. Um, can I type? Can I do anything? Nope. I guess the studio doesn't know how to work with 200%. Let me see if I can make it in 150%. It'll still be visible to you guys, but you know I still need to, I need to be able to function, right? So okay, let's try this again. Uh, maybe a little bit better. Maybe I need to restart my solution. Let's see, studio SQL studio. Ah, hold on. SQL Studio. Here we go. Okay, and I want to connect to my local DB. That's my local DB. Great. And then here's a bunch of databases. Here's the demo AI. And I, I can see the screen already changed. I, I don't think it knows how to handle... Um, yeah, hopefully, uh, yeah, that's much better. Okay, so we need a student, right? So this is unique identifier. That's the equivalent of a uh, kind of a, a, a GUID, right, for, for your thing. And here's a name, which is in varchar, in varchar, like that. And then here's my database. And then I want to make that guy a primary key. So set as primary key, great. I'm clicking Control S, save. So I'm saving, saving the data. And I'm going to call this data students. So now I created a database table called students. So let me refresh this a little bit. Here you go. I have students. Okay. Now I want to add something to these students. Let's say student assignments, right? I want to be able to go and say, well, you know, you have student assignments and these assignments, you know, are, are, are related to that student. So here I go. I'm going to create a new database. Also has an ID, which is a unique identifier. This guy becomes a primary key. Sure. And then the subject of the assignment in varchar 50 sounds good. And then uh, I want to add here a student ID, which is a, it's going to be a many to one. So it's kind of referencing a primary key to, to that. And it's going to be a unique identifier. But this time I want to go ahead and set up the relationship in here between these two tables. So from students, it's the ID on the student side that matches the student ID on the table side like this. And I'm going to close this and then I'm going to save this database. I'm going to call it student assignments. So far, so good. Uh, yes, uh, update everything. Great. And then I think we're going to have to disconnect and come back. Something crazy happens with SQL Server when you do that. Uh, let's see here. It should probably, it's probably going to give me an error or something crazy. Oh, okay, it's, it's functional. Oh, great. Now, if you look at the columns, you'll see that the foreign key, primary key all set up. If you're not familiar with databases and all that stuff that I'm doing right now, that's totally fine because it's actually just for you to see that I'm creating a database from scratch and adding data into that database from scratch without any anything anything else. Now let's just go ahead and create a quickly create a, a bunch of students, right? So I need something to generate to generate GOITs for me here. So I'm gonna go up in here. Here is all that good stuff. Give me a a new thing and then GUID generator and here is a new GUID I'm gonna need two of these and then let's just type Hassan in here and then I'm gonna need another one so here's another one and I'm gonna just put it in here I'm gonna say Naveen right should we put a, put a third one yeah it's try nature right so it's three and three and threes so let's put a third one in here and let's just say Kailu, for instance. Kailu. OK. So I have a bunch of students. Great. I want to go and say, let's say Hassan and Naveen have assignments, but Kailu doesn't have any assignments. So I'm going to go into the student assignment table in here. I'm going to kind of generate a couple of new GUIDs, but I want to just put the, the student ID here first just to make sure. So this is, yeah, this is my GUID. I'm going to put it in here and I'm going to say, let's say, what, what was my favorite, you know, let's say history, right? So a subject is history and I still need a new GUID in here. So let's generate a new GUID and let's go back here and let's put that in here. Okay. So that's, that's one record that's connected. So basically I'm saying Hassan has submitted an assignment that's in the history kind of topic. And then I'm going to take one for Naveen. I'm going to go back here and put it in here. I'm going to say Naveen likes math and... I, I, I guess I could use the same ID because it's not. Let's change it just a little bit. Let's cheat. So instead of 86, I'm going to say 11 or something. Okay. 
So how do we know this is really what it is? If I do a new query and I say select all from, let's see if I can zoom this, yeah, perfect. Select all from students like this, and I go and run this, it will give me all the students. And then if I do inner join, inner join, and then student assignments, SA, uh, and then on S dot student I, that ID equals SA dot student ID. So this is me kind of doing a, a join between the two tables. So I'm saying give me everything, right, where there is a match. So you'll see Hassan and Naveen are here. They had math and history, but Kailu is not there because Kailu is not a, uh, did not, did not really do the, the, um, an assignment or we don't have an assignment to them. Here's the tricky part. You see that little query that I wrote here, right? Almost 99.9% .9 of the population of planet Earth don't know how to write SQL queries, right? And to be honest with you, in this day and age that we're in, it doesn't really make so much sense. You know, if we have AI, if we have artificial intelligence, it really doesn't make any sense that people have to learn programming languages and still learn scripting and all that kind of stuff. You know, we should let the machine do that part while we, as as human beings, you know, focus on uh, innovation and intelligence and ideas instead of just being kind of, you know, tied up to these particular limitations. So instead of doing that nonsense, I want to be able to tell AI what I want, what I'm looking for, and AI should be able to give me back the results irregardless of what natural language I choose to play with. Let me show you what that looks like. So I'm going to go up in here, not this guy, I'm going to go up in here and show you some really cool library that I have made that will make you really happy. Let's start from scratch. I'm going to close all that stuff. Close all tabs. And let's create a new a new project in here. So I'm just a, a simple console application. And this console application, let's say at POC, uh, 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 Entity Intelligence, which is probably going to be the name of this library. And here's .NET 7, blah, blah. Great. Oh, I did this thing with, uh, with no menu and... Okay, so let me let me steal that from here because I really I really don't care about the there you go and yeah really really don't care about the the new style so using namespace um, poc dot entity intelligence yeah I I really don't buy into this whole non scoped stuff here you go <laughs> like this okay cool. And I also don't really care about the whole uh, universal usings. I think they're problematic. So that's just the old school in me doing that stuff. Okay, very simple console application right here. And this console application will do a lot of magic, will help us kind of communicate with the database. <coughs> so here's the first thing I want to do. Because we're talking to OpenAI, remember how we talked about this little uh, uh, diagram in here, we talked about how you know we need to be able to talk to a database and then this database we need to talk to OpenAI and all that kind of stuff I need an API key right so let me just go ahead in here and add this new library that I just created it's called standard.ai.data and here is your uh, standard AI data client new um, uh, AI data client and that guy will need an open API key and it will need a connection string. Here you go. Right. The connection string will take you to the database and the AI key will literally just kind of go talk to open AI. There's no there's nothing else in there other than these two pieces. Right. So I do have a connection string and a thing in here. So I don't really I'm going to just go ahead and steal those. And I'm going to go up in here and just do that like this. So this is a connection string, and this connection string comes in, it's talking to, if you don't know how to create a connection string, it's literally in your in your SQL server. So if you right click on demo API and do the properties, you'll see they have a thing in here called connection string, right? And in these connection strings, you have all the little details that you need about, you know, your server, which server you're working with and all that kind of stuff. You also, like here's the database name and all that, but 
you also can um, sorry these, these are connection properties but you can also get the connection string by a little trick that I like to play which is let me show you here if you do right click and then click add new item and then you type in just type in settings in here right and then you could find probably let's see here it's it's app settings Uh, oh, this this would show up, I think, only if you are in the format. Let's see, is it in the web part? Yeah, it only shows up in the format if you are in an ASP.NET Core application or something like that. So I guess I guess you wouldn't find it here. Uh, but uh, you know, it's it's really you're just mentioning the server and then you're adding the database and then the rest of those is just a trusted connection multi-result. I can even get rid of these and it will be just fine. And this is a real API key. Don't worry, I'll just update it after the, after the session, so we should be fine. Uh, okay, so I have this standard AI data client, right? So a standard AI data client, and then all I have to do really is run an AI query async. So what that basically means is that I'm supposed to get some results from here, and it, it's it's var intentionally because it really returns just an innumerable of dynamic components. I guess I could follow my own rule here and just say dynamic. But just for uh, for all intents and purposes, this is why this is. So this will return an innumerable of dynamic components. And there's a value task. I'm awaiting. We just need the query in here. Whatever that query that I'm going to be sending in is, is going to be. Why is this guy complaining? Because it needs a reference, right? There you go. OK, so I can just prompt the screen. So I basically can go and say uh, console right line uh, please um, enter query right and then I need the query from here so console dot read line if you want to run this forever you can do this little trick for each forever so if you do four semicolon semicolon just a very old school kind of way of doing things it'll just keep iterating forever right so it will keep prompting you so you don't have to keep running the app right and uh, we need to take that query and just pass it to this library and then things are just gonna start happening right uh, do we have the right database name though I said demo AI DB is that the name yeah demo AI DB we should be good here okay let's try this out together moment of truth I need to I need to print this dynamic results which was a, a crazy thing to do so I'm gonna just gonna steal this uh, little method in here let's see print dynamic yeah this guy right here I'm gonna steal this method here uh, if you if you have a better way of doing it please go ahead by all means you know this is just a way to print a because it has to learn about the properties because it's not always gonna come back with the same values so just heads up so let's say print dynamic list in here and these are my results let's go ahead and run this guy here we go yeah so it says natural query right so I'm gonna go ahead and say give me all students that are in the database let's see what this guy does with us there you go you see how it went and basically found let me zoom in a little bit for people it found Kailu Naveen Hassan just like that check this out give me only the names of all the students in the database check it out right so it's dynamic because it's basically going to open AI and it's saying hey take this natural query and turn it into something that the user can benefit from even if they don't know anything okay now check this out give me all give me uh, all uh, the names and the subjects of all students who have uh, assignments I'm really just thinking about this as we go I don't know what it's gonna give us check this out so Naveen subject math Hassan subject history it didn't bring Kailu right how beautiful is that right so you get the idea right the idea is to basically go and hit the database and query the database however you want uh, this is and, and I'm gonna share the code for this with you so you can play with it yourself and and try it out it's a very raw very dirty PUC 
uh, still there's a whole lot of problems to solve when it comes to that you have the token uh, limitation on uh, the AI side there is the uh, problem with reading an entire database schema uh, there is filtering uh, this video is just simply the um, uh, initiation or the beginning of being able to develop a standardized test-driven .NET library that will allow people to basically uh, pass in natural language query and pull back uh, actual data you know without knowing any SQL without knowing any protocols without knowing any technologies they just need the connection string and the AI API key and they're set they're all set they're ready to go uh, thank you so much for watching this um, you know just you know if you want to be a part of this uh, standard community effort uh, we're gonna start season two right so we're building on top of the library that we've already developed for open AI uh, I invite all the engineers everywhere to join in and be part of this um, uh, open source uh, amazing endeavor that will uh, hopefully uh, enrich you with knowledge about standardization building uh, enterprise level systems but also at the same time you feel proud of building a product that's out there that a lot of people would love to use and benefit from uh, if you have any questions comments concerns feel please feel free to drop a comment in the comment section don't forget to like and subscribe see you later take care